acting and juggling finances while trying to grow your art and audition at the same time? Mm -hmm. I auditioned for every scholarship that was available is what I did so I could train because I really didn't have it to pay. And then I also was blessed with, you know, I won't mention them again, Kirby Reed and Elaine Florence who if, if they saw something in any of us, they had our back and they would guest us for all their classes and all that, but I just found a lot of arts program. I did Gavin 37, I did anything at Columbia College. I did, you know, it's how I was able to finance my dancing before I was able to start making a living out of it. But that's a tricky thing for everybody, you know? It, it really is, but um, I will tell you this, you know, it's so important to talk to the instructors that you connect with and that you're trying to train with and explain to them your situation because I more care about your growth than what I care about your money. You know, we all need it to survive, but if I have a student who's passionate enough and vulnerable enough to come and tell me that, there's no way that I would say you can't take my class. So that's how I, and I was broke for a long time. <laughs> very, very broke. But where you feel broke, you feel rich in other words, because I was fucking dancing. And that's all I wanted to do. And that comes with a major sacrifice. Not everyone is up for it. You know what I'm saying? That, it, that, it, and it was challenging. You know, when I went to New York, it was challenging. When I first got to Los Angeles, the worst oppression I went through, you know? No one was interested in what I had to offer. But I knew I had something to offer, so, you know, people always say they want a, a seat at the table. I never want to sit at nobody's seat. I built my own fucking table. Yes. And you can come to me. You know? And, 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 you know, trust me guys, that's literally who I was. I went to Lincoln Park Performing Arts High School, and from the moment I left high school is that I started my first dance company at 17 years old that I had for 13 years that became an international touring company because what no one was going to give me, I was going to give for myself and the dancers who were following me. Wow. What would you recommend that we would train with in Chicago now? Like, is there a certain dancers? So, I'll tell you, one instructor I trust is the one that's hosting my master. <laughs> And you know, and I'm sure that if you don't know him already, he's more than willing to share anything with people who want to know. You know, but this is also your search. You have to search. I found. Remember, in my in our days, we had no social media to look for what or, or assess instructors. That shit is wild to me. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have assessments to our instructor. You showed up to the dance school you showed up to and you took fucking class. Yeah. That's right. You know, that's it. And you're not supposed to bounce because you didn't connect to one teacher. Those are the ones that will make you better. Mm -hmm. Work under that type of pressure. You know, that, that's what matters, all right? So, how was the energy like when you left? How do you feel that it has shifted since you left? The energy Chicago was like, like, in Chicago, at that time, I don't know, dance was just thriving. We had. Dance Chicago, we had Dance Africa, we had the Life Show, we had the Culture Shock Showcase, we had the Chicago International Salsa Congress. You know, there were so many dance companies there, really, but we had each other's back. You get what I'm saying? And we supported all of those showcases. If Life had a show, all the dance companies came and performed for Life. If Culture Shock had a showcase, we all did a piece for Culture Shock. You know, it was. It was just a different um, collaborative effort in the scene. And I think that we were just all wanting to be so fucking good that, you know, we made each other step up. But, you know, and again, I don't know where the full transition happened because I left, you know? But I know that when I left, Chicago was fucking thriving and, you know, it, it was happening. You know, like, good enough for those of us who got out to make a name for ourselves outside of here, you know? But it starts with community. If you're, if you're not part of building your community, then you're taking away from it. And if you're just showing up for credibility or for boasting, then you're doing the wrong shit because you should not be here for that. Okay, I have one more question. Yes. How do you, or how did you, or how do you continue to find the I'm not Okay, so I have to honestly say, I was very fortunate that I, had an incredible blessing from the universe that I was very self-empowered even when I didn't know that's how it was for me. Intimidation will exist. 
and all of that. But I was the intimidated person who got a thrill from that shit and wanted to show up and see what I could do facing it. You know, really what it was. I remember when I auditioned for Culture Shock, at that point I, had, I was just really focused on Latin dance for a while. But I was like, well, let me just go and, and see. And I wasn't the best, but I wasn't the worst. And then I became an assistant company director in the year that I was, you know, that, that it happened. So I, it, it's about taking chance and they're not good enough. Not good enough for who? And who gives a fuck who thinks what? I don't dance for nobody. I dance for me first. Because my dance belongs to me. I won't let you put a braid on it, put a level on it. I don't care. What I care about is the people who do care of what I have to offer. And that should always be all of your focus because you can't control what you can't control, but you could control the quality of what you're putting out. And that's, that's, that's the control you have, you know? But they're not good enough in comparison to who? I, I never had a complex. I was always the big boy dancer. I was always chubby. I was always fucking happy to be it. I never had a complex about it because I dance circles around the skinny fuckers any day anyway. So, you know, that, that, that's really what that was for me. But, you know, I did have an entire community that supported me. And I think that really had a lot to do with why I felt so empowered. You know, um, I'm a kid that was raised by a village and that village was home apart. And I have so many great mentors that they, they lifted me, they, they made me rise, you know? And it's just important that when you have somebody that looks at you like that and feels like that about you, that you don't take it for granted and take that energy and run with it because not everyone's going to give it to you. My people, thank you so much. You have to get out of here. I appreciate it.